the Chinese SKS. Let's check it out. Now there were over 50 million SKSs made and 24 million of those were made in China. These are really high quality SKSs. In fact, the Chinese military preferred the SKS actually over the AK-47. Both were adopted in 1956, but one of the things about the SKS is because you can load it with a stripper clip, even though it only has a 10 round box magazine, it's actually faster to load than a 30 round AK magazine. And so the SKS was a big part of the Chinese military up until 1981. Now the U.S. imposed an import ban on all Chinese firearms and ammunition in 1993. Any of your Chinese made firearms have actually increased in value over the past, you know, 30 years. But if Chinese made firearms that are imported into another country for a number of years, in fact these rifles are over 50 years old, they can be imported into the United States. Uh, Classic Firearms found a really nice lot of Chinese SKSs and were able to bring them into the country. And I want to thank Classic Firearms for providing this SKS for this test and evaluation. And if you haven't seen our crate opening up there at Classic Firearms, I'll have it annotated above. Now the SKS was designed in 1945 and actually saw some limited action during World War II right at the end of the war. Uh, and then of course China picked up the SKS in 1956 and also the same year that they adopted the AK-47 and it uses the 7.62 by 39 which is the same as the AK but according to Chinese military doctrine they kind of preferred the SKS and there were some reasons for that one is is that even though it only held 10 rounds it was quicker to load three 10 round stripper clips to reload one 30 round magazine and so they really liked that feature. Uh, also, it actually used less ammo because they only had 10 rounds. <laughs> but it also has a longer barrel. So they really felt like it gave you a little better accuracy. First thing we're gonna do is to drop this little lever and it releases your 10 round box magazine. Then we're gonna open up the chamber and we see that the gun is empty. To close the box magazine, just bring it and snap it right into place. This little lever is what holds it. It's really easy to open up. Now you do have your charging handle here, and it is a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, while Kalishnikov made the AK, Simonov made the SKS. And there were really kind of two different designs, but yet there are a lot of similarities between the rifles. There were even SKS rifles that were adopted to use AK-47 magazines, and I believe those were called the paratroopers. And they're fairly rare. Here we have the safety engage. It's very simple for safe, just push up and it blocks the trigger and then bring it down for fire. Uh, it, they do have stamped trigger groups and this one just happens to be a milled trigger group. Uh, the stamped trigger groups were just much easier to produce but these uh, milled trigger groups are definitely more preferable. It does have an adjustable rear sight and this is a leaf sight. You can take and press these two detents and it allows you to get out, and I believe this is located out to a thousand yards, which for 7.62 by 39 <laughs> is really way far than this rifle can really achieve. Uh, it does have a, just a small blade notch, but the sights are actually pretty easy to pick up. Here on the front, we have a post, and you can take this out, and of course you have a globe around it, and then there's a hole in the top where you can actually put a sight tool and adjust the elevation. And here on the side, you can adjust windage. There's no threading on the end of the barrel, but it does have a cleaning rod, and then we have the bayonet. And this is kind of a spring action. You just pull down, and it opens up, and then it just locks right here to the barrel. 
but this is the spike bayonet. They also made a blade bayonet. This has a chrome plating on the bayonet. Then we just bring it down and then you can just snap it back in. Right here in the stock, there is a groove where it fits. Here we have your gas tube and it is covered with wood. There are some that did have Bakelite. In the stock, you do have some finger grooves right here and it's real natural to just put your hand but uh, you can see the wood is kind of a red finish. And again, these rifles are over 50 years old. And so there are some dings. In fact, if you watch the SKS uh, uncrating video we did at Classic Firearms, uh, I went through about, I don't know, two or 300 rifles and picked this one out. I mean, the bluing was just beautiful. And uh, there were a lot of different conditions. But guys, the one thing about these rifles is that they are Chinese and they're limited to importation. So when you get one of these, you really have something that you can hold on to. And then the rest of the wood stock, uh, it does have a sling swivel here. A lot of the SKSs actually have sling swivels right here on the side. I personally prefer the sling swivel underneath. Right here at the barrel and gas tube, you have a sling attachment. Now it does have a metal butt stock. There's a trap door. Uh, I've put a cleaning kit in here. They just fit down into the butt stock itself. These are not included with these rifles. I just happen to have a couple. And that's one thing about these old rifles. You can find a lot of different accessories and parts that go with them. And a lot of times on eBay, things like that. But this is a little oil bottle and slings and all those kind of things you can find. In fact, here I have an old bandolier set. Uh, this holds stripper clips just like this. You can load them in. It holds 20 in each pocket. And uh, these are just pretty cool. I have had this thing for years and uh, I was, it was kind of cool to have to bring it back out. And guys, if you've always dreamed of being the ultimate tactical mall ninja, this is the way to go. Oh yeah! Hoyata! Now unfortunately, I did not have my stripper clips with me at the range on either day that we went. Uh, but these are steel and you can reuse these a number of times. Uh, this to me is one of the coolest things about the SKS. Really the best thing to do is when you bring back your action, there's a little guide right here and it's for your stripper clips. Slide the stripper clip in, just like this. And then you can just take it and load them in, take your stripper clip out, and then you can load the round. And if you want to unload really quickly, just hit this and all the rounds will drop out. Of course, you can see that it does have a last round bolt hold open feature. If we drop this, we can just press it and it'll come right back. And to me, that's one of the advantages of this over the regular AK-47. It doesn't have the last round bolt hold open. Now, one of the things that I love about the SKS is how smooth it shoots. I mean, it's low recoil, it's shooting 7.62 by 3.9, and it just shoots flat. Now, the only downside is it's 10 rounds. Of course, you can get 20 round magazines from Tapco, uh, but you're still having to feed it through the stripper clips. Uh, but feeding it with stripper clips makes it really fast. Now, unfortunately, I left my stripper clips at home when we went to the range for the two days we went. But that really makes this rifle very fast to reload. Now, the Chinese did a great job on the SKS. They made some really quality firearms. Uh, with these being actual military surplus, you know, they were up to really high standards. And so taking this rifle out to the range was so smooth. Even Sarah Mack really enjoyed shooting the SKS. There's no muzzle brake or no compensator, but because of the length and the size of the rifle, it is a smooth shooting gun. Now, as far as malfunctions, we did have one malfunction uh, where the round just didn't quite feed into the chamber. But otherwise, out of the hundreds of rounds that we shot, we had no other malfunctions. Of course, these were covered in Cosmoline when we got them. And so getting all that out was a little bit of a chore. Uh, I will have a video on cleaning the Cosmoline out of this rifle coming up. And I'll have it linked above. All right, guys, we've been shooting quite a bit. Uh, you can see a little bit of the Cosmoline coming through around the action. But on the wood, it's really clean. Those mineral spirits seem to work very well. I was expecting a little bit of this coming back out. And uh, we're definitely getting it. But uh, this will be easy to clean up. So I'm very pleased. Now, this assembly is really easy with the SKS. Of course, we're going to make sure the gun is unloaded. I'm going to go ahead and drop my magazine, close this up. Uh, first thing you want to do is to bring back your dust cover piece, and you do it at a 90-degree angle, and then just pull it back. Then you can pull that dust cover right off. Then we pull out our recoil spring. Straight in goes first. Curvy goes in the back. 
And then we just pull our bolt carrier out and the bolt is underneath and you can see, guys, we have been, <laughs> we've been shooting this rifle. But these rifles are very simple. It's one of the great things about it. Of course, you can see your hammer right here. Uh, your bolt hold open feature, you can actually access it from underneath and just push up and that will hold your bolt open. It is spring tension, so once it goes up, it'll pop back down. Now next, remove your trigger guard, put it in the safe position, and then right at the back here is a little detent. There's a hole, and I use a screwdriver. You can use a, a regular round if you want to. We're gonna set it down here and get a little bit of leverage. Can be kind of tight. Once it pops, you can pull your trigger group right out. You can see here, it's a very simple design, and yet very robust. Next, we can pull out our magazine, and uh, sometimes it's a little sticky. There it goes. This little section right here fits up into a, a little bolt area that locks this into place. Next, I'm going to take a cartridge, and I'm just going to pull this lever up, just like this. Now, when this is in the up and down position, we can pull off our gas tube, just like this. And as you can see, it fits right here and then just slides right out. Inside here, we have our piston. I'm going to bring it out. Now, if you continue to turn this lever, you better put your finger right here. There it goes. And this is under spring tension, and we're just going to pull that right out. And guys, that's pretty much all you need to do to field strip the rifle. Uh, and then, of course, to go back, take your spring, put over your piston, drop it in. Once you do, you want to pull this back just a little bit until it catches. Just like that. Next, take your piston, drop it in to your gas tube. We're going to set it right here. Lock it in first, and then just bring it down. You want to make sure that this is aligned. There it goes. And then we're just going to go ahead and bring down our lever into this position. I'm going to wipe the bolt down while we've got it out. Uh, one thing that's really critical about your bolt with the SKS is that it has a free-floating firing pin. You want to make sure that you can take it back here and move it, and it just floats. Here you can see the movement of the firing pin as I'm pulling back here. Uh, if this gets stuck, this can cause a slam fire. You can see that it just fits in that natural place right there. Just make sure your bolt faces out, but there's only one way that it'll fit. Now, when you're putting it down into this slot, it's a little bit tricky. So we're going to drop the bolt in, and then I'm going to slip in the bolt carrier. Right like that. And now it slides. It is a little bit of a trick to kind of get that lined up, but once you do, it'll slide right in. Take your recoil spring, go ahead and put it through. Next, we're going to take our dust cover. Make sure that this is in the up position back here at the back and push on your dust cover just like that. And right here, you'll notice this little lip. You're going to take the box magazine, that little lip on it. And this can also be a little tricky the first couple of times you do it. You want to make sure you get it under that lip. You want to make sure that this lip goes under these two bars. That's going to allow you to take your trigger group and slide it in there and also to capture your magazine. Now, I wasn't able to get good leverage on it because of the foam. There we go, snap it right into place. When this comes through, you know you're good to go. Now, if you're like me during the late 80s and 90s, Chinese SKSs were pouring into the US. I mean, millions of these came. And they started out at $59, $79, $99, and up to about $150. For a long time, a lot of people bought them. Sometimes when you're looking at this rifle, because it's $399, but these rifles, again, have been banned since 1993. And so the value of the Chinese SKS is really pretty high, and it's a sought-after SKS variant. And so while those days are gone, guys, I'm telling you, these rifles will go up in value. I've seen a number of them for around the five to $600 range. And again, I want to thank Classic Firearms for providing the rifle and also for inviting me up to open up a few crates and check out a lot of these SKSs as they've come in. It kind of gave us an inside look in the military surplus world. And guys, these are a limited supply. They are $399.99. Guys, if you were back in the 80s and 90s, those days are long gone. These rifles will continue to go up once supply ends up to five, $600. 
Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. It's no wonder that the Chinese military and this wind, man, this wind is like freaking blowing and blowing, quit blowing. Man. It's a hurricane. Semi-automatic, it's just a... Now one of the big appeals to me is... Oh yeah, hoya thought.